Hello folks, this is uh, ADAC 47, and I'm back to do part two of uh, resizing small images to uh, give you a full screen resolution. So I picked a different example today from the uh, last uh, part one video, somewhat more challenging. Uh, and I also want to give a more in-depth uh, explanation of the pixel problem. So let me start with this thumbnail size view of a pic, very tiny. You can see there. Uh, yeah, see if I can get it to zoom to fit. There we go. And <clears throat> the size of this image is only uh, 187 pixels by 135. And so if we want to increase the size by clicking and dragging here, the operating system has to, or the software, previous software, has to somehow figure out what it would look like on a larger display with more pixels. It has to interpolate basically information across a larger area now. And you can see the individual pixels here, uh, which are simply the values assigned in the original picture uh, for a single pixel to the color for the three different uh, co color components, red, green, and blue, RGB, and also for the brightness. Those are the four values that determine what goes in a pixel. And it has to redistribute these, that value for a single pixel over a much larger area because we're increasing the size. And this makes visible uh, artifacts, or JAGs, pixelization as I call it, my own word, uh, as a result of increasing uh, the small image to fit a large screen. Um, and I demonstrated in part one how we can use a Gaussian blur filter to soften this edge and remove this high frequency or high detailed noise, which is the edges of the pixels. And so today I'm going to go into that in greater detail. So let me close this. I've illustrated the pixel problem. Now let me show you the actual picture I had to work with here that I downloaded off the internet of a Corsair. It's in pretty bad shape. Uh, it's not nearly the size of my screen, so I'm going to have to do some work with resizing. And it's got a lot of confetti and uh, these lines, other artifacts uh, that weren't in the original photo that got superimposed on it through handling and other problems, uh, storage, whatever. So uh, we're going to discuss how to go from here to a final state. Here's one final state. Okay. It's larger and it's cleaner. Um, and if I wanted to match the proportions of my screen, uh, this would be a final state. There we go. The white screen version versus the original. Okay. So how do we do that? Um, well, I'm going to create several uh, Photoshop files. Uh, this is the first example. I'm simply going to take this original image and go into Photoshop and save it as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. It's a JPEG, GPG file initially. That means it's a compressed file, so a Photoshop will decompress it. Uh, and you can then make successive edits and saves with it over time without it recompressing at each stage, which would uh, keep adding uh, compression artifacts to your image. And that's why you want to use this. The downside is this file, let's take these both in here view them. This file is the original JPEG is 255 kilobytes. It's about a quarter of a megabyte roughly. And the PSD file is 3.7 megabytes as you can see here. And uh, that is over 10 times larger. And that's the price you pay for decompressing. Uh, and, but then the advantage is if you edit and make changes, uh, it's to the original uh, native uh, resized version um, and you don't get additional compression artifacts when you save each time and we'll make it into a JPEG at the end for uploading to the internet or storing on our hard disk but that would be the last stage when we're done with all the editing. Okay, so just to reiterate, we start with a JPEG, we take it into Photoshop and save it. We get a Photoshop file that is the same image but much larger and then the next stage would be to resize it by uh, using the uh, image resize option, which I'll show you in a minute. 
And now the uh, size goes up to 7.4 megabytes from 3.4 or whatever it was. And that's because we're making the image bigger. So it takes more information to represent the additional pixels. And then we're going to want to uh, take the edge off this. Uh, and we're going to actually do that one pixel Gaussian blur trick, which I've done here. And if we compare these two images, this is what it's going to look like before we do the blur when you zoom in one level. And this is what it's going to look like after the blur. So before and after. Let's zoom in a little bit more for both of these. Okay, before, after. Okay, and notice the face. Before, it's a little bit pixelated and uh, blobby. Uh, much better here, as we smooth over the information. Okay. And so, resize, resize, adding a one pixel Gauss, and then we're going to restore it. I'm not going to show this today in any detail, but I'm going to remove all that garbage from it, uh, which is just to show you the two com in comparison. This is before restoring, and this is after. So we take out all this confetti, and notice what happens to the lines. They go away, uh, and so do the confetti dots. Okay. And then, in my case, uh, this photo, the original uh, aspect ratio for it, didn't match my monitor. So I wanted to crop this photo here and make it match my uh, monitor. Uh, so uh, in this case, we're resizing it. I'm sorry, we're cropping it to be 25, uh, to be my aspect ratio, which I'll show you in Photoshop in a minute. And uh, when we do that, of course, it reduces the dimensions in the vertical direction because I'm having to cut off the top and bottom to make it match the width of my screen. So we're going to have to resize it back up, and then we're going to have to add another uh, one pixel of a blur to cover the jagging from that. So I'll go through that all in a second. Okay. And then when we save that final version, in this case the widescreen version for me, as a JPEG file, which is what we really want to keep, um, it, the, disk, the, the size goes down from 7 megabytes plus to uh, 314 kilobytes compared to the 217 or whatever we started with. So that's the whole route that we go from uh, A here to B here. Okay, from here, 255 kilobytes to 314. Uh, we didn't have to pay a very high price for increasing and cleaning up this image, partly because I, I cut out uh, some stuff. So let's show how you do this in Photoshop. We'll start with our original image. I'm not using the thumbnail, obviously, but the original image is to show to you again. That's what we're starting with. Take it into Photoshop. There we go. First thing we want to do is resize it. We go to Image and Resize, Image Size. And we're going to make the pixels here. I'm going to make the height 1440. I misled you a little bit in my last part one video. I said if it's in a um, landscape mode, you should uh, fit to the edges of the screen. Really, the rule is uh, go in the direction, resize in the direction where the edges are closest. So in this case, if the top and bottom edge are closer the, of, the, of the picture, are closer to the top and bottom edge of the screen, resize in that direction, because that requires less change in the overall image. Uh, and that's true in this case. Incidentally, you can also resize based on a percentage increase. Okay, That would be an option. I'm not going to choose it. But you can choose to double your size, uh, size just by selecting 200%. So we resize here. Now our image has gotten bigger to conform to that. And it's resized to make the image be 14. 40 pixels uh, high, and it turns out 2,004 pixels wide to preserve the same dimensions. Okay, so now we've done that, um, and the next stage is to apply a filter to get rid of the jag that's resulted from resizing. We can also see uh, these fringes I alluded to in part one uh, caused by uh, JPEG compression, these phantom contour effects. Uh, so we go up here to filter and select blur. 
and then select Gaussian Blur. And I already had it set up for one pixel because I was working earlier and that's what we wanted. So that's okay. We've got a one pixel blur now. And let's zoom in. And we're going to undo it, redo it. Now that's the advantage you get. We talked about this earlier when I showed you. And undo it, redo it. Okay. Okay, so that takes us up through um, resizing and uh, blurring to remove uh, the jags caused by the resize. And now we're ready to clean the image up with retouching. Okay, so just as a quick example, I'm not going to uh, show you how I did it all, but you pick the uh, spa healing tool, which is right here, right here, spa healing brush tool, and size it. I've already done that. I'm going to clean up these lines by just simply clicking and dragging, and the spot healing tool uh, basically uh, gets rid of the uh, dots or uh, other uh, pieces of information that don't seem to belong, like these lines, by, let me just click it once with a quick drag. I need more. There we go. And it interpolates across, in this case above and below, and fills in what it infers you want to get rid of because it's the one thing in the image that's different from everything else. Okay? It could be a line or it could be right here a dot and it just fills in from the background basically. And we can clean up other garbage like that by just clicking. Uh, we've got these lines in the bottom and I'm obviously not going all the way to the right side. You would continue this and smooth out these artifacts that got superimposed in the image. And that's the retouching phase. Here's a scratch in the bottom edge of the wing. Okay. You can also use the clone tool. Sometimes working near contours like this, it's easier to clone than to use the spot clean touch because it sometimes uh, creates uh, little phantom edges uh, that don't look quite right. So between these two tools, you can completely touch up and repair the photo, including tears and jags. Uh, you also can do color balancing if you want uh, using the enhanced menu, um, adjust color, adjust lighting uh, to get brightness and contrast. That would be something you could consider doing. But now we're ready to move on. I'm going to get rid of this file because I already have the completely retouched one right here. So I don't want to, I want to bring this into Photoshop, not the preview. So here we go. So imagine that I just completed all that retouching and this is the result, okay? So it looks pretty good. And now I want to consider changing the aspect ratio to match my screen. And to do that, we simply click on the selection tool and select, you've got either normal, which will let you pick whatever area you want to crop to, like that, you could crop the image to that. Let me just show you how that would work, just crop it. Boom, that becomes the image. Now I'll undo it, because that's not really what I want. I want to have a, a crop that matches the aspect or the dimensions of my screen. To do that, I'm going to go in here and pick Fixed Ratio, and then you have to specify a number here, which I have already done, that represents the aspect ratio of your screen. Mine is um, 2560 pixels wide by 1440 pixels high, Width over height is a ratio of 1.78 to 1. Uh, so I put 1.78 for W and 1 for H. And that means now, selecting that tool, if I crop the image, it makes, it constrains it to be exactly the proportions of my screen. And now I can center it, and then I can uh, crop it, and I have an image that fits my screen. Okay, it will fill my screen completely without any black bands on the top or the bottom. And because I've resized, I've uh, cropped it, I have to resize it again. So I would go into image, resize, image size. You can see it went down to 1126 vertical pixels when I cropped it. I'm going to put it back to 1440. There we go. Command zero for certain all of you. And uh, because we uh, increase the size again, we have a little bit of um, jag reintroduced. Okay, 
So I'm going to go ahead and add a one pixel blur, although I think a 0 0.5 pixel blur, 0 0.5 pixel blur would work fine. Do our usual Gaussian blur. I already have it set up for one pixel, so we'll just accept that, and boom, we're done. Okay. So if we zoom in here, you can see it's done a pretty good job of smoothing the uh, jags out of everything. Okay. Without introducing too much, um, too much uh, blur. And then we have the last stage is we have to save this as a JPEG file. And you might have stopped at the previous image that had the uh, different aspect ratio before I used the white screen crop. And that's fine too. But the last thing you do is you save a version by going to edit, uh, I'm sorry, file save as. And then select here to change it back to a JPEG. Remember, it started as a JPEG and we turned it into a Photoshop. Now we're going back in the last stage and we're going to save it as a JPEG. We specify the compression level. I find that uh, eight is fine for me. And here's our result. Full screen mode. There it is. Completely fills my screen. Okay. 2563 by 1440. It's approximate, of course, 2560 by 1440 when I do the crop. And the resulting size is 314 kilobytes versus what we had earlier was 255. So that, in short, is how to do a complete uh, resize of your screen. Uh, in order to proceed all the way from um, the initial image that's smaller than your screen, to resize it to match your dimensions of your screen, to retouch it, and to, oh, I left out one part to, to uh, remove the jags using the Gaussian blur, uh, to retouch it, and then uh, finally, if you need to, to crop it to match your screen dimensions, and lastly, save it as a JPEG for uploading to the internet. You want, don't want to try to upload a PSD file, you don't even think Google will accept it. So anyway, that concludes my part two demonstration of how to resize small images to fit your screen. If you have comments or questions, you know what to do. Until I talk to you again, this is ADAC47 signing out.